I knew from then that this show was different. <laughs> Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell, today we're discussing Atlanta season one, episode one. That's right, we're going back to basics with it. I'm so excited to talk about this with you guys. I watched the episode and I was like, whoa. First and foremost, I probably should have watched season one again before reviewing season three for you, which reminds me, if you're new to the Atlanta universe, you may wanna put this in your watch later playlist, go through season one, two and three and come back to me because I'm going to be tying and tethering in themes from season three in these episodes. If I only knew then what I knew now, because they have been setting us up from day one for everything that we experienced in season three. And I see it now from the dog that Darius pointed out in the distance to Al's and paper boys dissonance to van being lost. It was all there all along. Like my vision that is diminishing, if I only knew then what I know now. But that's okay, we're gonna go back. I'm really excited to do this with you guys. I hope you are too. So let me know down below what your favorite scene from this episode was, and I'll let you know mine as we go along. So this episode opens up in a time loop. We don't know when we watch this the first time that the scene at the start is actually the end scene because they do it so masterfully. Here we meet three characters. I think the only name we hear is Paperboy. And there's an exchange with two supporting characters. A gun goes off, the screen goes dark. We get some beautiful pans of Atlanta. And I don't remember when this show first aired. All I do remember is back then, my only interpretation of Atlanta was the music. So I love that Donald Glover brought some context and culture to what Atlanta looks like to the people who live there, who are on their grind. I mean, now my interpretation of Atlanta is from some of my favorite influencers and vloggers, but that's different from this lifestyle, if you know what I mean. The next scene we see is very similar to our reintroduction to Earn in season three. He's in bed, except this time, Van hit some on the head, trying to get his headphones off, asking why he's awake at this time. And already from jump, we realize that their dynamic is different. We can't really tell what relationship they have, but we know there's something there, especially when Van asks, do you love me? What I really love about Atlanta that they've carried through every episode and every season is how they tell you so much about a character without us being hit on the head. Some other shows I watch, I'm like, take me for a fool. Why you have to say it like that? I could have figured it out on my own. What I love about Atlanta is through panning through the house, through them almost getting Nookie to her fixing her hair and letting him know I got a date tonight to him picking up Lottie and making fun of the situation, we realize Ern is kind of a dusty and Van is kind of confused. And looking back now, knowing what we know from episode 10 of season three, it was there all along. Ern is at work. He works at the airport doing sales. He's with some other colleague who's talking about a rapper. And at first he's not paying attention because he's too busy looking at his competition, an older lady doing inappropriate actions behind clients signing up for the program. I'm laughing at this because Atlanta has always been so strangely bizarre and inappropriate. And then we see on the cracked iPhone, because it's all about the details, I said that the iPhone really had to be mashed up like this, that Paperboy is not just an up and coming ATL rapper, he's actually Ern's cousin. And looking back, I'm thinking, how strange is your relationship with your cousin that you don't know that they're out here rapping in these streets? Because me, I have over 60 cousins, and if I knew someone was an up and coming whatever, this, that, and the third, I'd be in the know. I mean, also Instagram is a thing, but it was a thing when Atlanta first came out too, so I don't know. Anyways, the next scene is Ern going over to his parents' house and I'm done. They won't let him in the house. His dad says it's too expensive, which again alludes to Ern mooching off those who love him because Van is asking for money in the scene before, he's not making money at work, and his parents won't let him in the house because they probably can't afford to give him what he's asking for. But this time he's asking for the whereabouts of his cousin. And I thought again, if you're trying to link up with your cousin, shouldn't there be a better way? Is there a number? Is there someone the same age group? But I guess, okay, go to family. 
they were doing too much when his mom was talking about going through the stools, though. I mean, I could kind of guess by the way Ern looked that he wasn't taking care and his diet wasn't right. But his mom talking about the candy in the doo-doo. Why did you go through his doo-doo? Why didn't he flush the toilet? This whole thing is a mess. So <laughs> Ern goes to where Paperboy is at. This is where we get introduced to Alfred, AKA Paperboy and Darius, who is my favorite character. I love that Darius has the cookies in one hand and the knife in the other, because that is my energy and type of time all the time. I don't know whether to present you with the best hospitality or be ready to jig you up because you never know. You just never know. So I fell out of this moment because that, that reminded me that every single character that we've gotten to know through the last three seasons has evolved and Darius has remained the same. Don't know if that's saying a good thing or a bad thing. I probably won't have an answer until season four airs, but I'm just saying. <laughs> From there, Darius, Al, and Ern go to sit on the couch. And I remember this being such a classic moment. Couch potatoes, potheads, aspiring artists. I'm looking at the three of them and looking back, I didn't realize back then, but I've had an Al, a Darius, and an Ern in my life. I don't know what that says, but it was just funny reflecting on that. And the thing about going back and revisiting old shows or movies is it reminds you how far you've come and how much you might have forgotten about your process in your own life. This is where Darius points out a dog in the distance. And the thing about Darius is he's such a textured character. On the outset, he gives you like, what did you just say? What is that about vibes? But then when you give him the time of day, you're like, he's actually in a weird twisted way, right? Ern brings up the proposition of being Al's manager and Al lets him know up front, why would I trust you? You weren't there for me when my mom died and now you're here on some business-ish. That was crazy. I completely forgot about that. And the nerve, the nerve of Ern to step to his cousin about business after not even being there when he needed him the most. I've had cousins like that, I'm not gonna get into it though. Let's skip to the next scene. Ern is in a parking lot, meeting someone who I'm assuming he knew from his Princeton days, which was another thing that was alluded to on the couch. And I thought, looking back then, Ern gives pothead vibes, but he's not smoking the weed, so what's up with that? And I thought maybe he's got anxiety and maybe that's why he couldn't be in Princeton, but I think it's more layered than that. So he's meeting this colleague in the parking lot who's got Starbucks on Starbucks on Starbucks. And he's asking for a favor and the guy's telling him, yeah, it's gonna cost you $500. It's a really interesting exchange, especially when homeboy is telling Ern a story that ends with him dropping the end bomb twice. And I'm like, I don't even use that word. I love that Ern asked the custodian, has that guy ever used the word around you? <laughs> and the answer the custodian gave, that's my energy. You can't disrespect me. Obviously that man with the Abercrombie and Finch haircut felt comfortable, too comfortable to say that around you, not once, but two times. As far as Ern's character goes, I was faltering on him until this moment when you can see the gears are moving and he's trying to find a way around the problem. He comes back later on the evening to slip a disc under the door. Where do they do that anymore? Do people even take the USBs? Isn't everything like a QR code these days? It's just funny watching something that's not that old and being like, oh, that's old. Meanwhile, this is with the voiceover of Al talking to Ern's parents and them not really vouching for her much, but his dad does say, if I know anything about my son, he's determined he's gonna get things done. And I don't know why that moment put me in my feels, especially since you could tell Alfred was very apprehensive about taking on Ern's suggestion. Fast forward a little bit, the song gets play on the radio, Paperboy is happy, Darius is in the back seat, and then Ern comes and he's like, okay, we will do business. He takes a puff and I'm like, is that a good idea? Cause I'm still trying to feel out Ern's situation and what's going on with him. I was laughing so hard when Al shouts at the girl, she doesn't give him a nice play. And then my heart jumped. I completely forgot that her boyfriend hits the review mirror off the car. Talk about a horror scene jump cut. Atlanta has been doing that since day one. I guess it never gets old, does it? But before that happened, let me not rush myself. The boy from the radio station comes over and Ern's like, tell me that story you were telling me before. 
And I started laughing because I said, I already know what the setup is. He can't say the N-word around these two because he ain't trying to, and he doesn't. And the story wasn't funny to begin with, but it especially wasn't funny when he couldn't tell it the way he told it the first time around. So I thought it was very funny. Ern says, you know, good luck with KP, as in I might have screwed you over with your manager, but I don't care at this point. And then that altercation goes down. They all get out of the car. Ern is trying to tell Al, you have something to lose now. Let's just get the money. But of course, ego and pride gets in the way and someone gets shot that day. Let me not get ahead of myself. One of the scenes that sets us up for the supernatural essence of Atlanta is when Ern is on the bus late at night with his kid. She's got her headphones on. He's listening to his. There's a strange entity. I can't even call that man a character because he's just, he's giving creepy. Sitting across from him. Then sits next to him, says this very prolific quote that I don't want to butcher, so I'm just going to put on the screen. And I thought it was very beautiful because it was kind of like edging Earn towards the possibility of a better future, better than what he's living. He's making a sandwich. He tells him to eat the sandwich. Earn looks at him like, nah, I'm, I know that's okay. The bus jolts stop. The man disappears. But it's not like he's an apparition or a ghost because he gets off. And he's walking into the forest with the dog. And I said, what Duras things is this? I knew from then that this show was different. <laughs> Back to the very last scene. Van comes home. Ern's mom is like, the wine is done. And Van's like, the whole bottle. And now that I'm trying to analyze things instead of just have a good laugh, I said, what does that speak about Ern's upbringing? If grandma comes to watch granddaughter and drinks the whole bottle of wine, hmm. Noted. The TV's on. Van realizes that Paperboy and Ern are in a situation. Faces on the screen. She says, idiot, and that's end scene. And then we hear the Paperboy song. And I wanted to talk about this part just a little bit. Two things I do want to touch on with you guys. One, this is my realization that besides Paperboy rapping on the couch about massage effing, and I was just like, what? We don't really hear Alfred rap. Two, when we're in the car and Ernest telling Alfred, the song's not bad. He says, I don't really like it or something to that effect. And looking back at what's episode six of season three, the one with Wiley, the dissonance was always there. Now I see with clarity that from inception, Paperboy wasn't really in it, or at least he wasn't producing songs that stuck to his heart or spoke for himself. Watching that episode years ago, I thought that was weird because I dated a rapper before and he was always about his songs and most of them were good, I can't lie. But to hear someone honestly say in passing so casually like this, like, I don't really like the song, it makes you wonder. Now that he's famous, at least on his Europe tour, what is he in it for? And now I'm looking at certain episodes in season three completely differently. It's just... I don't know what to say, guys. There's just so much in this episode that ties into all of season three. I might have lost vision over the last five years, but I definitely see this better than I did before knowing what I know now. That's hindsight, right? 2020. This episode alone, there is so much there that lets you know every single episode one through 10 of season three had a purpose and tied into this episode alone. So I can't wait to go through the next nine episodes with you guys because I can't even imagine how many other parallels there are. Like I said, all the characters evolved except for Darius. So it's gonna be so interesting to revisit these with new eyes. I mean, less vision, but knowing more. <laughs> so if I miss something, if there's something I need to read or see or something I didn't see because I couldn't see it clearly, let me know down below. But as far as themes go, yeah, there was a lot. I just didn't know. When you first click on Atlanta, you don't know what you're getting into. They they really set us up right. So, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. It's just... That's all I got to say for this episode. I could say a lot more, but I might save it for Patreon. So definitely check out my Patreon if you want to get a personal take. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.